Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this episode of Practical Applications of Science, we're going to be covering the study titled Association of Sprint Performance with Ground Reaction Forces During Acceleration and Maximal Speed Phases in a Single Sprint from the Journal of Applied Biomechanics, published in 2018. So basically what they did in this study was they got 18 male university athletes and their 100 meter sprint PB times were between 10.54 and 12.30 seconds. So there were some guys that were pretty fast and then some guys were not so fast. And basically these athletes performed a few maximal effort 60 meter sprints from starting blocks, just as you would see in a track and field event. And they used 54 force platforms to collect ground reaction forces. So I'm not exactly sure how they did this. I'm assuming the force platforms were placed underneath the track they were running on and they were sensitive enough to capture the force of each of the steps throughout the 60 meters. So these graphs here are showing basically the average ground reaction forces of the athletes. So this isn't one particular athlete, this is just an average of how they typically looked. So this is straight from the research paper and these numbers here are basically showing each step after the takeoff from the blocks. So one would be the first step after the block clearance, two would be the second step, three, four, etc., until they got to about 28 steps. So as we can see with these vertical forces here, they start out lower and then they gradually get higher. So as they're accelerating, their vertical forces aren't as high, whereas when they're at maximum speed, their vertical forces are much higher. The other thing to take note here is that the duration of the force application so we can see here in the first step the duration of the force is much longer than these steps here meaning there's a longer time to produce force during the acceleration whereas at top speed there is much less time to produce force so the force is applied much quicker this graph here is looking at the front and back forces so if they're above the line that is basically saying that the forces are forward if it's below the line, it's basically saying the forces are backwards. So they're going to be breaking forces, whereas these ones above the line are going to be propulsive forces. So there was a slight trend downwards here for propulsive forces to be greater in the initial few steps, whereas at top speed, the propulsive forces are slightly less. And this makes sense as when we're accelerating, we're generally inclined a little bit and therefore we're going to push the ground back more. The other thing to note here is that there were much greater braking forces at top speed than during acceleration. And as was seen in the top graph as well, the force application was much shorter in duration at top speed than during acceleration. And the last graph here is basically showing the medial and lateral force applications. So obviously the bars above the line are going to be either left or right, and the bars below are going to be the opposite so if these are left these are right and we shouldn't really see too much difference between the lines since it's just going to be one foot acting first followed by the other foot and we can see there's not much different in magnitude between the acceleration and then the top speed again the only difference is that duration of force application so when they looked into the relationships between the athletes who sprinted faster versus the athletes that sprinted slower there was a few trends and correlations that they found. So the first thing was that during the acceleration phase, the athletes who were faster had larger horizontal propulsive forces, which makes sense because they're able to basically push into the ground harder, propelling themselves further forward. The other thing was that there were larger vertical forces during the maximum velocity phase. So with each ground contact during maximum velocity running, the vertical forces were larger in magnitude, which again makes sense. They're striking the ground harder, which is then going to react to propel them forward faster. The other thing that they found was during both the acceleration and the maximum velocity phase, there was less braking forces. And this is quite intuitive. If we have less braking forces, then we're going to be able to minimize how much we're slowing ourselves down essentially and therefore allow more of our force application to be forward rather than backward. So what does this mean? Essentially, we can take home a few practical applications for training to get faster. So the first one would be when we're training acceleration, 
we probably want to use more horizontally oriented exercises since there was greater horizontal forces during the acceleration phase. Whereas at maximum velocity running, we probably want to use more vertically oriented exercises with a shorter contact duration. So maybe like vertical plyometrics could be a good exercise. And then during both the phases of running, we want to minimize braking forces. And this is probably going to come down more to technique and how to strike the ground properly rather than particular exercises or training we can do. So if we learn how to appropriately strike the ground so that we're minimizing any braking forces and maximizing propulsive forces, we're going to be better off during both phases. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.